Hello, hello, good afternoon, good afternoon. It is Saturday, um, September uh, the 17th, and uh, just um, completed a funeral for one of our members, uh, mother-in-law, Cassie Lafitte, and we uh, buried her, uh, her mother-in-law, Mrs. Clara uh, Lafitte, there at the Good Samaritan funeral home, and I wanted to get back here so that I can go ahead and get this lesson uh, for you today and then share uh, a special announcement uh, as well. So let's go ahead and get into the lesson uh, there. Let's go ahead and get into this lesson uh, right about now as we thank God uh, for all the great things that he is doing and what we know uh, he has uh, the ability uh, to continue uh, to do uh, as well. Listen, I want to share uh, with you just a few things uh, there. Uh, of course, you know and you are aware of our giving methods and uh, we know what they are. You know what uh, they are and make sure that you uh, exercise uh, giving uh, the opportunity that God has gifted us uh, for our Sunday school uh, our public offerings, our tithes and offerings uh, as well. And you know, uh, some, some of you have been very, very faithful uh, through Givelify and also uh, give during the church service because keep this in mind that the uh, St. Luke Church is open, open for worship. And we definitely want to see uh, each of you, see each of you here on Sunday morning. Uh, District Sunday School, the District Sunday School uh, I'm sorry, it's tom uh, tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., the 9 a.m. hour. You know the number, you know the passcode, uh, and the meeting ID. Please tune in. Very good lesson, and the lessons are blessings uh, for us. Uh, the uh, birthdays for the month, we have Bailey Gladney. God bless you, Bailey. David Smith, God bless you. Uh, Dr. Larry Pinnell, uh, God bless you, Dr. Pinnell. Uh, Jimmy Archie, our bass guitar player. Happy birthday there, Jimmy. Thank you for what you do uh, and what you mean to our music ministry. Ms. Jimmy Black, Gloria McCray, Wanda Francis. I had the wrong sister, as I said at church uh, on Sunday. Wanda Francis, who comes and helps us with our music ministry, and Coach Larry Anderson and Ms. Doris Robinson. Happy September uh, birthdays uh, there uh, to those of you. Don't forget tomorrow, every, every Sunday, we are in person and uh, we do have our virtual worship services as well, Facebook uh, and YouTube, and you are welcome uh, to definitely, we want to see you in the building, uh, but certainly make sure that you're tuning in uh, on one of the platforms. Uh, today's lesson uh, has to deal with the issue of endurance and faith. Faith is endurance. Last week, it was faith is assurance. This week, it is faith is endurance. Faith is endurance. Keep the faith, I believe, is what this lesson is teaching us. In Hebrews chapter 12, uh, it is building on the example of the heroes of faith that are mentioned in chapter 11. You see, the main point of this lesson is that these people endure suffering and hardship, yet they held to their faith in God. This allowed them to achieve victory. Yes, in chapter 12 in particular, it points out that earthly hardships, listen to this, it's not a sign of God's displeasure or abandonment. Rather, it's part of living in a fallen godless world. I think one of the things that we have done uh, in the Christian tradition as the prosperity gospel and other forms of the gospel uh, have been misinterpreted there that every time something happens to you, it is that God is displeased or God has abandoned or left you. However, the truth is life happens. Things happen. People will betray you. Jobs will be lost. Health will fail. But God still expects us to utilize that measure of faith to keep us going. And in many cases, our faith is a form of discipline and training that the Lord has to use as he molds us into more powerful instruments. Remember in Jeremiah 18, when uh, the prophet Jeremiah was told to go down to the potter's house and watch him work 
masterpiece on the wheel. The good news is, is that perhaps as God, as I'm going through difficult and as you're going through difficult circumstances and situations, that is God working on you, on the wheel, on the wheel of life. And I thank God that as long as God's hands are on me, that means that he still cares for me and loves me. Now, this text also encourages us to lay aside our sin and endure the race while keeping our eyes fixed on him, who is the author and finisher of our faith. The, the first two verses say, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses of spectators. I was at the ball game on last night, way up in Farmerville, and uh, the cloud of witnesses, the spectators that were there cheering on the Captain Shreve team. And on the other side, there was a cloud of witnesses cheering on the Union Parish team. And uh, this cloud of witnesses, and that's what the cloud of witnesses, the spectators are doing. They, 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 they are encouraging. They are encouraging you letting you know that you can make it. Let us lay aside weight and sin, which easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance, patience, the race that has been set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and now has sat down at the right hand of God the Father on his own throne. Yes, we've been watching how uh, at the burial of, of Queen Elizabeth. But, but aren't you glad that there is a, a throne greater than that of King Charles III? Yes, yes. Look at the text. I just read those scriptures there. Let us strip off every weight. We have a huge crowd of spectators. And in ancient days when the, uh, when the uh, runners athletes would prepare to compete, they, they, they would take off the things that would weigh them down so that they could be able to run the race, whether it was a marathon, whether it was a sprint, whether it was middle distance. And life gives us that. Life, life, life gives us sprints. Life, life gives us middle distance runs. Life even gives us marathons every now and then. But we've got to run every race with patience and run them that God has set before us. We do this, how? By keeping our eyes on him, who is the champion, the author and finisher of our faith. He initiates, meaning he begins it, and then he perfects it. He makes it better. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding the shame of it. Yes, what was once the symbol of suffering and shame, Jesus transformed into a symbol of hope and deliverance and resurrection. Aren't you glad that even in the middle of a Good Friday world, you can still have an Easter Sunday faith? Now he is sitting in the place of honor, the right side, beside God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from, sin, from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. Be not weary in well-doing, because in due season you shall reap, you shall reap, if you faint not, many times we faint, we stop, we quit. After all, you have not yet given our lives in your struggle against sin. And have you forgotten the encouraging words God spoke to you as his children? He said, my child, don't make light of God's, of my discipline. And don't give up when he corrects you. Man, I'm so glad, and I know you are as well, that somebody disciplined you. That somebody, yes may have uh, uh, had to uh, discipline you for whatever reason. But at the end, what did you find out? That, that discipline, that, that, that regimen has made a difference in your life. Thank God somebody disciplined. For the Lord disciplines those he loves, and he punishes each one as he accepts as his child. So for whom the Lord loveth, that's who he chastises. Remember I said that his hands were on him, on the wheel, well, that lets me know, too, that if God's hands of correction and chastisement is on us, then that lets me know God still loves me. As you endure the divine discipline, remember that God is treating you as his own child. Who ever heard of a child 
who is never disciplined by its father. Well, we live in that age now where children are not being disciplined because we see all the things that take place in our society, all the ills. But, 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 those, but there is a need then for discipline, even in our lives. If God doesn't discipline you as he does all his children, it means that you're illegitimate and not really his child at all. Oh, my God. So if that, that, what that means and what that says to me is I want God's discipline. I need God's correction because I, I believe that, that people who don't discipline their children is a sign of a lack of love and not necessarily a sign of, of understanding. I'm glad that I get discipline from God, correction from God, chastisement. But the reason I believe I can handle the chastisement is because I know also he is also a God of mercy and God of grace. And that, that allows us to endure. Since we respected our earthly fathers who disciplined us, shouldn't we submit even more to the discipline of the father of our spirits, the father of heaven, who allows us to live forever? While our earthly fathers disciplined us for a few years, doing the best they knew how, but aren't you glad God's discipline is always good for us so that we might share in his holiness? God knows what he is doing. God knows what he is doing from the beginning even to the end. He knows it when he does it. and He, is, he knows the outcome. He does it for his glory. And that we might be made better. Yes. No discipline is enjoyable while it's happening. It's painful. But afterward, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. God is saying something very, very powerful to us in this endurance. That no discipline, whether it's training and uh, working. I watch the football players who have to go through the regimen, the discipline of lifting weights, running uh, uh, doing drills. I remember last night at a ball game, uh, this kid was in the third quarter and ran the ball a lot of times. And I, I was amazed at how even in the third quarter, the fourth quarter of the ball game, the boy was still running the football just as hard as he had done in the first. That's because he had trained his body. And that's because he had disciplined himself so that he did not get tired or exhausted. We must discipline and train our minds and train ourselves so that at the end, we will yes, share in what is definitely the very glory of what God is doing, even in our lives. Because afterwards, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. God, 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 train, God allows us to be trained. God allows us to be perfected in our faith and to be disciplined in the way that he would have us to go. My God, what a lesson. Well, the first thing is this. Believers must run the race. Paul, whoever the author is, in fact, we're not sure. We uh, don't know who it is. Some believe it's written to the people at Rome. Others believe it's written to Christians coming out of Egypt. Uh, the early church. Believers must run the race. Yes. That's why Paul said, I finished my course. Believers must develop endurance for that, for a marathon. You see, it takes a different set of endurance for a sprint than it does for the marathon or middle distance run. Some things in life, God has to give us endurance for the long run. But at the same time, God needs us to be just as strong for the short-term problems as well. Believers must learn to accept even the discipline of God. That's the hard thing to do. But, but we know that for whom the Lord loveth, he does. He does chastise. What a great lesson. What a great word. What a great opportunity for us to be blessed. This story is of John Stephen Aquari. In the 1968 Olympics, held in Mexico City, John Stephen Aquari came from Tanzania. His country had uh, scraped together enough money to send him there. However, he fractured his knee early on in the race 
but he chose not to quit. The marathon uh, goes through, uh, uh, begins in the stadium and goes went through the various areas and localities of uh, Mexico City at the time, Mexico City being an elevated uh, city. But, but John Stephen Aquari, yes, got behind, leg fracture. Everybody else had made it back to the stadium. Everybody else had completed the race. But John Stephen Aquari could have quit, could have stopped, could have given up. But John Stephen Aquari said something. He said, you know what? He said, my country sent me here to finish the race. They didn't send me here to just start the race. God has said, we can learn a lesson from that. John Stephen Aquari taught something that day. He didn't win the race, but aren't you glad? And sometimes you can, your testimony is, I finished the race. Well, so you had an announcement for you there. And this is, I believe, a three-day-old uh, Gia Grace Hudson. This is Maya's baby there, which makes this my first grandbaby. Gia Grace Hudson, pretty little baby there. Looks like me. So it's a pretty baby. It's going to be smart intelligent. Uh, baby's doing fine. Freshman is doing fine as well. So we want to pray for the baby, pray for Maya, and we thank God for this new addition uh, to, to our family. Uh, God bless you there. Yes. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to talk about it. He asked him, what is your name? And he answered saying, my name is Legion, but we are many. I'm going to preach about that tomorrow. I'm going to talk about that. I like this sermon. In fact, I'm going to call it Jesus encounters a crazy man. Yes. I'm not talking about you, but Jesus encounters a crazy man. God bless you and God keep you. I want to see you tomorrow morning. I want to see you be blessed. God bless you. Thank you for listening to that.